Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center and happy early Valentine's Day, y'all! That sweet day is almost here and what better way to celebrate than taking a look at Cupid, the Greek slash Roman god turned into a modern symbol of romantic love and sweetness. So if you could like and subscribe, that would be lovely. And now let's get to it. Love is in the air, which is great. And bugs are also in the air, which isn't. Especially when those bugs are huge and want to bite you while you aren't looking. Such as today's research subject, the Cupid. Crossiculex amabilis are a species of culicide, or mosquitoes, that became huge as a response to the extinction of many predator species in the area after the extinction event known as the Classical Age of Greek heroes. They have adapted to much larger, silent wings in order to lift their much heavier bodies, aided by a thinner and lighter exoskeleton, common to most giant arthropods. As one can imagine, such big insects require very large amounts of blood in order to produce their large brood and so they have evolved specifically to feed on large mammals, especially deer, although humans made for equally good prey. Still, the large amounts of blood taken from prey may leave them dizzy and lightheaded, and this effect is only increased by the sedative, anesthetic effect of their saliva, which evolved to keep prey relaxed while they feed. This would result in jokes being made about people stung by these animals, who would often be interpreted as being in love and having their head in the clouds. Indeed, many times the affected themselves would confuse the symptoms. This would, interestingly, turn into way less of a joke once humans discovered the source of this feeling and began grading the cupid mosquitoes to make aphrodisiacs. Hence, these insects would be called cupids, from the Roman word cupere, to desire. They would, however, also be called the archer mosquito, since the surprising swiftness of its flight and the pain produced by their bite, once the anesthetic effect had passed, would often be compared to being hit by an arrow. Given the reproductive purpose of blood drinking, one will imagine the female cupids are the only ones that feed in this manner, as is the case with most mosquitoes. That said, for a long time people were unable to find the males of the species, and it wasn't understood until later that this is caused by extreme sexual dimorphism. Males are highly neotenic, and will remain in an aquatic, larva-like form even after reaching sexual maturity although they will still be much larger and specialized for swimming than the larvae of the species. Both males and females will hibernate during winter, only meeting at the end of the season in order to mate. Females will then begin feeding during the following days, being most active during February, causing sudden outbursts of infatuation and enamorment in the land they inhabit. And that's it for speculative biology look into Cupid. But why, you may ask, why would you do this? Well, I decided to turn Cupid into a giant insect because, interestingly, Cupid has been compared to bees in the past, by virtue of being small, but packing quite a powerful sting. So deep, bro. But I know I've made quite a lot of bees in the past, and it might feel a bit repetitive, so a mosquito it is. And the way a mosquito expands as it feeds on blood gave me a really fun chance of incorporating the chubby, rosy little guy aspect while also adding a heart motif to the design. It also allowed me to make this one extra blurst, which, come on, that's always a lot of fun. And the male was made to resemble a dolphin due to the fact that Cupid is often portrayed with dolphins in art. For reasons. And while making the effect of their bite an aphrodisiac could have worked, blood loss is usually counterintuitive to many bodily functions, 
so I decided to keep the effect more subtle, as well as more within the realm of cute romantic love, or the illusion of it caused by blood loss. Anyhow, I hope you liked this episode, and big thanks to everyone who wanted to see this holiday icon, and also a big one to our patrons and channel members for their support. And please remember to sound off in the comments below about any creature you would like me to give the spec evil treatment in the show. Thank you all for watching, have a great Valentine's Day, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.